morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everyone is having a better New Year than I am. <laughs> I've spent January in bed with a bad cold, so that's why I, I am staying masked when I'm around anyone. I don't want anyone to get this. Kirk and I have been down for since the 30th of December, so it's a it's a good one. <laughs> so let's see announcements today. Uh, the wildlife supper is coming up next weekend, and you can get your tickets either at Deluxe Hardware or Prairie Sky Treasures downtown. And that is on Saturday, the 21st. Always a good. Uh, <clears throat> time, a good fundraiser for a good cause. Um, let's see, January 17th, this Tuesday, is the Pioneer Haven Soup and Sandwich Day. So that starts at 11.30, I believe. Yes. Yeah, so that's a good little fundraiser for the Pioneer Haven as well. Are there any other announcements? Anything else going on in town? Pie and ice cream on Wednesday at the Senior Center. Okay, uh, what time is that, Marian? Two to four. Two to four on Wednesday the 18th, pie and ice cream. Okay, is that what you were going to say? No, I was going to say make sure you go to the soup and sandwich and you can visit with Dorothy MacArthur. She just moved into the fire in her haven. Did she? Okay. And she would love to see everyone. That's why she moved in there, because she'd get lonely. So Aww. you get in there and see her. <laughs> and then you can stay and enjoy another sermon from me. Because <laughs> Tuesday's my Piner Haven, Haven service day. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, anything else going on? Sandy, you've got your ear to the ground. Anything else going on in town? That's about it. There's some hockey this weekend, I think, but every weekend. Every weekend. Well, that's a given, isn't it, when you've got the hockey. Okay. Uh, let's start out with lighting the candle. <clears throat> we light this candle today to remind us of the purpose that God gives to his people, to this church, to you and to me. Isaiah 49.6 says, I will make you a light to the nations so that all the world may be saved. The scriptures talk about how God has chosen us to be a light to the world, to be a people who, by how we live and by what we say, attract people to God, that we are people meant to share the good news about Jesus with others. God says that we, as people, are like this candle, that we can shine or not shine. God wants us to shine. God wants us to light up the world around us and in doing so, draw people closer to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Oh God, help us to recognize and celebrate the ways in which we reflect your love. Help us to appreciate our differences and to celebrate our oneness as members of the Christian family. Together, may we spread Jesus' message about you. Amen. And if you'll turn to your bulletins today, uh, we'll start with our call to worship. <clears throat> Like the disciples, we are called to be God's servants, to serve others, to tell the good news of God's love. Paul calls us, we are called to be saints, set apart to live in God's way. We are called to be a light, to show with our actions the love of our God. As God's servants, saints, and light, let us worship God. And we pray together as we read. We have gathered in this place as your saints, O God. We have come to celebrate your presence in our lives, 
and the many ways in which you have immersed us in your grace. Help us to be aware of the many ways you have enriched our lives, and always to give you thanks. Amen. And our opening hymn today is number 415, God, we praise you for the morning, number 415. That's a preview of our next hymn. If you'll join me in the prayer of confession, as printed in your bulletins. You do not require burnt offerings from us, O God, but instead you call us to do your will. Sometimes we do it, but many times we ignore that call or we make excuses or we allow obstacles to present themselves and prevent us from doing the things you ask us to do. Forgive us when we do that and challenge us to do better, for we want to serve you always. Amen. The grace of God has been given to us, and in that grace we find forgiveness in abundance. Let us show our appreciation by rededicating ourselves to doing God's will. Our minute for mission today is entitled, Theological Education Provides a Roadmap to Vitality. The Vancouver School of Theology just celebrated its 50th anniversary. The school, which receives support through mission and service, has thrived for over half, of century, uh, half a century thanks to your generosity. We are committed to serve and support the church, says their president and vice chancellor, Richard Topping. To that end, the school has big plans for the coming year to expand facilities in order to create more teaching space for its growing student body, 
to begin new partnerships and to invest in helping congregations flourish. Many congregations struggle with issues of viability. For example, managing and maintaining buildings and paying for staff and other related expenses. Through our Congregational Vitality Through Community Engagement Project, we want to help communities of faith refocus on core principles of church health and begin to explore new ways of becoming a thriving church, says Topping. Right now, through the Congregational Vitality Initiative, <clears throat> the Vancouver School of Theology is working hard to identify the challenges that congregations are facing and help them see what the future might look like. As the research unfolds, the Vancouver School of Theology will gather the best resources and practices that lead to congregational vitality and help them make them available to the whole church. With proven resources in hand, congregations will be equipped to become more healthy and vital. For communities of faith that are struggling or need extra support, the school plans to offer hands-on support. Your gifts are crucial to the work of our school. It is a source of encouragement to our work through these days when the whole of our operations is online. Through the hard work and dedication of a staff, faculty, and student body who not only work hard but also care deeply, we have been able to continue, keep, to, continue to keep our calling to educate and form thoughtful, engaged, and generous Christian leaders for the church and the world in the 21st century, says Topping. So thank you for your gifts for mission and service. By supporting theological education, you ensure not only that the church has strong leaders, but also equip them and the whole of the church with a roadmap to vitality too. So thank you. And we will turn to hymn number 348. O oh, love, how deep. Number 348.
was a long one. I need to catch my breath. <laughs> oh, all right. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. Listen to me, distant nations, you people who live far away. Before I was born, the Lord chose me and appointed me to be his servant. He made my words as sharp as a sword. With his own hand, he protected me. He made me like an arrow, sharp and ready for use. He said to me, Israel, you are my servant. Because of you, people will praise me. I said, I have worked, but how hopeless it is. I have used up my strength, but have accomplished nothing. Yet I can trust the Lord to defend my cause. He will reward me for what I do. Before I was born, the Lord appointed me. He made me his servant to bring back his people, to bring back the scattered people of Israel. The Lord gives me honor. He is the source of my strength. The Lord said to me, I have a greater task for you, my servant. Not only will you restore to greatness, the people of Israel who have survived, but I will also make you a light to the nations so that all the world may be saved. Israel's holy God and Savior says to the one who is deeply despised, who is hated by the nations and is the servant of rulers, kings will see you released and will rise to show their respect. Princes also will see it and they will bow low to honor you. This will happen because the Lord has chosen his servant. The holy God of Israel keeps his promises. And we'll turn to page 764 in Voices United, Psalm 40. Psalm 40 on 764. I waited patiently for you, O God. You bent down and heard my cry. You lifted me out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and wonder and will put their trust in you. Blessed are those whose trust is in God, who have not turned to the proud, nor to those who follow a lie. O oh God, my God, you have multiplied your wondrous deeds <clears throat> and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I would proclaim and tell of them, but they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not re required. But you have opened my ears to hear, and I said, Here I am, ready to do what is written in the scroll of the book. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is in my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. I did not restrain my lips, as you well know. I have not kept your goodness hidden in my heart, but I have spoken of your faithfulness and your saving help. I have not concealed your steadfast love nor your truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold from me your tender care, O God. May your love and truth ever persevere me. And reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. From Paul, who was called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ, Jesus, to the church of God, which is in Corinth, to all who are called to be God's holy people 
In some versions, it says to be God's saints, that you'll need to know that for later, who belong to him in union with Christ Jesus, together with all people everywhere who worship our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. I always give thanks to my God for you because of the grace he has given you through Christ Jesus. For in union with Christ, you have become rich in all things, including all speech and all knowledge. The message about Christ has become so firmly established in you that you have not failed to receive a single blessing as you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be faultless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is to be trusted the God who has called you to have fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And our final reading is from the book of John, chapter 1. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, There is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. I did not know who he would be, but I came baptizing with water in order to make him known to the people of Israel. And John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and stay on him. I still did not know that he was the one. But God, who sent me to baptize with water, had said to me, You will see the Spirit come down and stay on a man. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen it, says John, and I tell you that he is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing there again with two of his disciples when he saw Jesus walking by. There is the Lamb of God, he said. The two disciples heard him say this and went with Jesus. Jesus turned, saw them following him, and said, What are you looking for? <clears throat> they answered, Where do you live, Rabbi? This word means teacher. Come and see, he answered. It was then about four o'clock in the afternoon. So they went with him and saw where he lived and spent the rest of that day with him. One of them was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. At once he found his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah. This word means Christ. Then he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas. This is the same as Peter and means a rock. For the reflection today, I gratefully acknowledge the resources that I found from the Reverend Richard J. Fairchild, Whole People of God, United Church of Canada Gathering, and Ralph Milton. And that's entitled, Spread the Light. We are in a new year, and we are in a new day. Being God's people means that we find ourselves in new times and places often. As we have just come from experiencing once again the wonder of the Christmas story, we realize that we cannot leave it behind in December, but are challenged to carry its message of peace and hope into the new year, into a new world, and into a new day. The birth of Christ has changed our world and now we look for and experience ways in which Christ leads us into a new day. As we do so, we share insights of our journey and we listen for new insights to the stories of others. The gospel stories that we read in this season tell of the beginnings of Jesus' ministry. And we certainly can think of the disciples discovering that they were in quite a new world and new day as they left their old lives behind and chose to follow Jesus. This new world is something we also are called to help bring about. 
When we seek out ways to live the spirit of God's law rather than the letter of it, amazing things can happen. The reading from Isaiah is from the period of the exile in Babylon and is known as the second servant song. The current situation seems hopeless and the servant's strength is used up. In the midst of the daily routine in exile, the servant again hears God's voice and has a moment of clarity and understanding. <clears throat> Not only will God's people be restored to their former position and relationship, but they will be like a light for other nations. A new day is dawning. In Psalm 40, the psalmist tells of a personal experience of God's deliverance and of the gift of a new song, a song of thanksgiving and fresh vision. In the epistle, Paul gives thanks for the many gifts and talents within the Corinthian church. And in the gospel, John the Baptist directs his disciples to Jesus as the one they are waiting for. Andrew meets Jesus and goes to get his brother Peter. With dawning awareness, the good news spreads like light from a flame. They say that every growing child needs a pat on the back. Well, my dad would say, and a pat on the bum, but... Uh, <clears throat> but here's Paul's offering. Here Paul is offering the first pat on the back to the young church in Corinth. Just as Isaiah's servant was aware of having significant gifts from God, the Corinthians have special gifts too. And I find it remarkable that the stuff Paul writes about then is stuff we're still dealing with in our church community today. It's interesting that Paul talks of the spiritual gifts the Corinthians have. But he doesn't say those gifts will bring them wealth or health or soft wavy hair or shiny white teeth. All those spiritual gifts are given so that you may be blameless when Jesus returns. And Paul was expecting that to happen any day. Most of us know ourselves well enough to know <coughs> that blamelessness isn't something we aspire to. We're all implicated in the sins of a struggling world. But those spiritual gifts are to be longed for and worked for and treasured. It is with them and through them that we can make a difference. Like the first disciples who were called to follow, to move, to change, we too are still invited into this call of serving, responding, and following. How can we do that? We can share our stories and invite other people to share their stories. Let these stories inspire us and call us to continue to bring forth the gospel message. Jesus calls the disciples to join in community, to come and follow, and to share the good news. In our reading from John today, Jesus asked Simon and Andrew to be his disciples. Jesus' disciples were special friends who helped Jesus and other people too. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus calls us to be his friends, to be his disciples. Like Andrew, we are invited to bring our friends to meet Jesus, and we are asked to tell others about Jesus. To put it in hockey terms, I guess, Jesus is calling us to be on his team. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, or what you can do. He is calling all of us, you and me, to spread the light and share the love. <clears throat> now you've probably either seen or been part of the following scenario. Someone cuts you off in traffic, causing you to almost get in an accident. You become angry and you stew all the way home about what a jerk that person was. <coughs> when you get home, you trip over a pair of shoes that one of your family have left out instead of putting away. So you track them down and you exchange some angry words. 
Now your bad mood has transferred to your family member who later gets in a fight with a friend, and so on. Bad moods can spread like wildfire. Well, you know what? So can good moods. We have all heard the concept of paying it forward, usually meaning a good deed or a kind word to others. When we do that, we are not only spreading a good mood, but we're spreading the light of Christ to those around us, who will then share it with others, and so on and so on, as the old shampoo commercial said. We often hear people offering advice to graduating high school students on how to plan for their future career. This advice can include taking aptitude tests or volunteering for different organizations to find your interests or <clears throat> going to school and taking a general course of study that touches on a lot of different subjects for the first year until you find out what you like. One piece of advice that is often given is very simple. Find out what you really enjoy doing and then make a career out of that and then you will succeed. And as examples, people will mention Oprah or Bill Gates. Well, I don't really identify with Oprah or Bill. But then I also have a really hard time identifying with other heroes who are larger than life. Mother Teresa, Dolly Parton, Martin Luther King, Terry Fox. They set a level of commitment I can't aspire to. The same applies to biblical heroes. Moses, Ruth, Mary, Paul. Stories of exceptional saints can backfire. If you set the bar too high, people know there is no way they can reach it, and they just walk away. But these are not the kind of saints that Paul was talking about. He was talking about saints who are the ordinary members of the church in Corinth. What makes them saints? What miracles have they performed? Nothing fancy. Just good old-fashioned human kindness and decency. Hospitality, warmth, generosity. That's what the journey of faith is basically about. To be worthy of the name saints, as Paul used the term, we don't need to do anything exceptional or different. And we don't have to get it right every time. We just need to keep widening the circle. I saw something on Facebook this week, and oh, did it make me think. Now, if you're a fan of uh, sci-fi at all, or Star Trek, one of the things that often happens in, in uh, sci-fi is uh, someone will find a way to time travel. And the biggest rule in time travel is you don't change anything when you go to the past because you don't know how that one little change could affect the future and we could all end up having two noses and a tail. Right? So that's the rule. And this thing that I saw on Facebook said, so we always think about if we go into the past, that you don't change a single thing, not a single thing, you don't step on that ant, you don't, you don't, nothing, right? Because you don't want to change what happens in the future. But we never think about that single thing that we could do right now that might change the future. It blew my mind, it really did. Because that's that one single thing. We don't need to do anything exceptional. We just need to do that one kind thing, that one generous thing. Be warm to one person. Show hospitality to one person. We just need to keep widening the circle. But I will also make you a light to the nations, so that all the world may be saved. We are called to a new awareness of how we should relate to one another. We are called to follow the light, Jesus, and we are called to spread that light. Following Jesus' path of the Spirit should change, could change 
everything for us and those around us. Following that path, doing that one thing, could change everything for us and those around us. It could spread that good mood. As God's servants, we too are called to work with passion and faithfulness for justice for all. So may we do so with grace and love and light. Amen. And we will turn to hymn number 595. We are pilgrims. Number 595. We will now share God's blessings. So let us stand and sing the offertory song, just because we haven't stood and sang for a long time. And it's number four, no, 541. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's in the bulletin. It's in the bulletin. We pray together. Each gift we offer, O oh God, is given freely and lovingly, that through your church we might do the work of making disciples and changing the world one person at a time. 
Amen. Do we have any joys today? Anything we're celebrating? When I was visiting with Dorothy, she announced that she has a new great-grandson oh. called Mac. Dorothy has a new great-grandson. That's wonderful. Congratulations to everybody. Everyone's happy and healthy? Yeah, Amanda and Dylan. Oh, Amanda and Dylan. Wonderful. Congratulations to Amanda and Dylan and the rest of the family. And welcome, Mac. Yes. And there's a list of birthdays I mm. put on your podium there. Yes, I see that. Curtis Knorr has a birthday this week. Allison Knorr has a birthday this week. And Trevor Henning has a birthday this week. So happy birthday to those people. Anyone else? Anything else we're celebrating this week? I got clothes on. <laughs> I'm not in my jam jams today. <laughs> Guess that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, uh, I'd like to do a shout out to Brenda and Vicki for helping get the Christmas decorations down. Thanks, Brenda and Vicki, for. De Christmas, Christmas fying, Christmas. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. Hey, that's pretty good. Only one broken ornament. That's better than my house. My tree's still up actually because we just haven't had the energy to take it down. <clears throat> and a thank you to Ashton Tetzloff for yes, a big snow again. yeah, and big some heavy snow. big thank you to Ashton Tetzloff. He he uh, moved, cleared up, and cleared the pathway to go down the hill and moved some snow and said uh, it's on the house happy new year nice guy so we are certainly grateful for everyone who does things that help keep our church community going um, if there's no other joys uh, concern oh. actually there was one other one was there I got to see some pictures on Facebook of a birthday party that was downstairs on Monday. Oh, the yeah. Girls. Yeah. And they had it decorated, decorated up nicely, and they said it's a wonderful space to, to be able to rent. Yes. Yes. Every, she said everyone should have their children's birthday parties there. It's perfect for children's birthday parties. That's what she said. So that's good. Any concerns this week? Who are we? Who do we need to include in our prayers? And who needs a call or a visit or something? Who do we have for concerns this week? <coughs> Joe Dublowitz, yes. Uh, Shelley has been keeping Sandy and I sort of updated on his progress, and he's down to the oxygen in the nose. What's that called? That thing. The name, yeah, he's, he's not on a mask anymore, he's on the name, so he is improving. And she sent me a picture yesterday of Joe doing a thumbs up, so he is, he is uh, recovering, so hopefully he will be back in Crawford soon. Um, and anyone else, uh, any other concerns, people we should be thinking about? Okay. All right. Gracious God, we thank you that you have called us to be your servants in the world to work for justice and goodness, to help those who feel unloved and unworthy, to know that they are loved by you, to reach out to those who are in need, helping alleviate not only their needs, but their sense of hopelessness. Gracious God, we thank you that you have called us to be your saints in the world, to be set apart for your purposes, and to live our lives a little differently than those around us, not because we are better than they are, but because you call us to a different standard than that of the world. We are set apart to experience your presence always, and to find ways to make your presence felt by others in our world. And if you'll join me in the prayer. 
Gracious God, we thank you that you have called us to be a light in the world, to shine boldly so that others might see that your way leads to wholeness and new life, and to show others the ways you invite them to live. Gracious God, may we be your servants, your saints, and your light, this day and always. Amen. And we'll turn to number 96. Number 96. Will you come and see the light? <clears throat> number 96. God sends us forth to be a light to others. God's love and faithfulness go with us forever. God will strengthen us to the very end so that we may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love and faithfulness go with us forever. Let us go in peace to love and serve God. Amen. And remember... That little thing you do could change the future. So think about what that could be. And I believe, is there coffee? Yes. I believe there's coffee downstairs. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.